Just a mere nine months ago, our subclass looked much different than they do now. A lot has changed since then, guys. Since Stasis introduced the Aspect and Fragment system, and since the community asked for that same system to be implemented into our subclasses. This birthed what we know as 3.0 subclasses. Void, Solar, and Arc all look miles different now. But are they actually better than they were before? Let's look back at everything we left behind and answer the question, was it all worth it? Starting with our Hunters. Hunters, you had some deprecated abilities and perks. First up, Void, Corrosive Smoke ability, Vantage and Smoke melee ability, and Heart of the Pack. Corrosive Smoke actually allowed you to throw your smoke bomb from a distance with this melee ability. Now the smoke bomb slows enemies and damages them over time. To replace this, Snare Bomb was made as the default melee ability. Now the only option for Void Hunters. The slow effect that Corrosive Smoke had is now tied into the weakened effect which Snare Bomb provides. Now Vantage and Smoke, which was way of the Pathfinder, you could throw a smoke bomb explosive from a distance, making you and nearby allies invisible. However, Vantage and Smoke was deprecated as a standalone melee option, with the Trapper's Ambush aspect taking on its perks. Not only does your smoke bomb make allies invisible when you have Trapper's Ambush equipped, but the aspect also gives you the quick fall ability, letting you actually dive into the ground, weaken the enemies around you, as well as making allies and yourself invisible, which brings us to Heart of the Pack. Killing tethered enemies creates orbs of light and increases mobility, recovery, and resilience for you and nearby allies, and it lasts for 30 seconds, and it can stack up to three times. This perk was completely removed, nothing to replace it, and is honestly one of the most missed perks on the Hunter class. Now, obviously, we've been able to work around this. We've had things like resilience changes. Since then, you're able to tank more. Heart of the Pack, though, was a top-tier trait to have in our subclass, so having it completely removed does hurt, and I'm sure my Hunter mains can attest to that. And again, when we're actually taking Void 3.0 or any of the 3.0 subclasses and comparing it to previous subclasses, that's the question we're trying to ask here was whether or not it was worth it in the overall scheme of things. Next, we have our Solar Hunters. Practice makes perfect. Knock them down. We're both change. First up, if you guys remember, Practice makes perfect was part of Way of the Sharpshooter, where you actually enter a trance with each precision hit, reducing the cooldown of your super. It also increases super recharge rate for 1.5 seconds and stacks up to three times, resetting to full duration on each precision hit. Now, another was added to help super regeneration via precision hits, so this perk was completely deprecated. Knock them down was moved to focus on super buffs instead. Now, knock them down, Way of the Sharpshooter, states that precision kills increase weapon stability and handling. Your super does more damage when cast while this buff is active with 20 or more seconds remaining. Now, knock them down was actually changed into an aspect, and the precision kills granting stability and handling was kind of moved to the on your mark aspect, which provides handling and reload speed on precision kills. Now, the static super damage buff was turned into unique buffs depending on which super you're using. So, Deadshot has increased duration, Marksman has increased damage resist and duration, and Blade Barrage launches more projectiles. Now, for my Arc Striders, Ebb and Flow perk, as well as Lethal Current being reworked. First, Ebb and Flow, Way of the Current. Hit a target with an Arc ability to electrify them. Meleeing electrified enemies, disorients them, and grants grenade, melee, and dodge energy. Now, electrifying was changed to jolt, and disorient was actually changed to blind with arc 3.0. Now, this perk was separate between the flow state and the lethal current aspect, minus the bonus grenade and melee energy regeneration. Now, ability regeneration was most likely cut because Bungie wants arc hunters to be the get up close and personal, weaving between enemies kind of class. Also, arc hunter melees like disorienting and combination blow combined with certain exotics like Liar's Hand shake make for really good builds already without needing that extra melee ability regeneration that ebb and flow provides and grenade energy just doesn't fit that arc hunter fantasy bungie was going for now granted you can be a grenade chucking arc hunter hell just check out our shinobu's build this was fantastic for spamming grenades over and over but the lethal current aspect took the blinding on melee part of ebb and flow while also giving your melee attack extra bonuses after dodging like increased lunge range and the ability to jolt and create damaging aftershocks the old lethal current only created damaging after shocks after dodging while in your arc staff super which is really nice here so big benefit here now moving on to tines deprecated abilities and perks starting with void tactical strike defensive strike melee abilities and turn the tide passive now starting with tactical strike guys this was part of code of the commander where you strike an enemy with his melee ability to cause a void explosion and this was actually deprecated because that void explosion was changed to the volatile verb which requires an enemy to become volatile then any added damage to that enemy causes an explosion that being said the control demolition aspect makes your void abilities cause volatile meaning you can still get the tactical strike effect it just takes an extra step you and nearby allies also get health when those volatile explosions occur near you when controlled demolition is equipped now defensive strike this was part of code of the protector where you kill an enemy with his melee ability to create an overshield around you and nearby allies now the ability to gain an overshield via your melee was added to both shield bash and the new shield throw melee which would have made defensive strike just a worse option compared to them so guys in this situation again another example.
example of 3.0 being better. Now turn the tide, Coat of the Protector. Your overshield from defensive strike lasts longer and increases melee damage and reload speed. Now the ability to extend the time of your overshield was actually added to the offensive bulwark and Bastion aspect, as well as an echo of persistent fragment. So again, a lot of these, even though they've been deprecated, they were actually split off into some of these other fragments and aspects. Now moving on to Solar. Mortar Blast melee ability, tempered metal and explosive power perks, and sunspot and sun warrior changes. Oh uh, yeah, starting with Mortar Blast. This is part of Code of the Siege Breaker, where you strike an enemy with his melee ability to release a solar explosion, setting nearby enemies on fire. Now, the solar explosion was actually changed to Ignite, and on fire was changed to Scorch with Solar 3.0. The Mortar Blast ability to essentially Scorch and Ignite is the exact same thing that Solar 3.0 Hammer Strike does, except it requires you to kill with the Hammer Strike to cause an ignition. Now, Consecration Aspect also gives us a brand new melee ability that will also Scorch and Ignite, but in a much larger radius. You see in the trade-offs here, fellas? Now, Tempered Metal, Code of the Fireforge. This says that Solar Ability Kills grants you and nearby allies bonus movement and reload speed for 15 seconds. Now, this was actually completely deprecated, likely because Solar 3.0 isn't really focused on moving fast or being faster at all, and that ended up being an Arc 3.0 thing. Solar 3.0 is more focused on ability regeneration and healing versus speed. Now, Explosive Power, Code of the Fireforge. Enemies killed by Hammer of Soul explode. Now, once again, Explode was actually changed to Ignite. This was essentially changed into the Ember of Combustion Fragment, which makes final blows with your Solar Super cause enemies to ignite. So now, either Super can get what Explosive Power provided for Hammer of Soul before Solar 3.0. Now, Sunspots. Sunspots provide restoration instead of a damage boost. Now, listen, some people do like this change. Some people hate it. I'm kind of in the ballpark of hating it. I know Solar 3.0 is all about healing, and that's like the identity there. Healing, ignitions, explosions, scorch, but Sun Warrior before its nerf was one of the best things for Bottom Tree Sunbreakers, and it single-handedly made me a Hammer Titan for so long. Sun Warrior was actually changed into Soul Invictus, where Grenade and Melee Regeneration Bonus Scalar cut in half from 3 to 1.5. And the reason for this change from Bungie, quote, in general, we want significant amounts of ability regeneration to come from build crafting rather than any single source, and the amount of bonus energy granted by Sun Warrior didn't meet our goals in the new system where additional build crafting elements are present. Fair enough. Regardless, losing that damage buff really messed up my builds, man. We used to run around one-shot body shotting with Lorley and our high-impact aggressive sniper and Sun Warrior. It was a beautiful thing. Now, moving on to Arc. Frontal Assault melee ability, Aftershocks, and Trample Perks. Now, first up, Frontal Assault, Code of the Juggernaut. Striking an enemy with this melee ability reloads your weapon and increases your weapon stability, lasts for 10 seconds. Now, this was actually deprecated, probably because Arc 3.0 is big on the fantasy of melee. Bungie does not want you to stop punching. They want you to sprint super fast and melee a lot versus just punch once and then switch to your now reloaded weapon. Again, Bungie's leaning into the identities here. Now, Aftershocks, which was part of Code of the Earthshaker. Each enemy hit by Seismic Strike increases grenade ability to charge by 25%. Now, this was completely deprecated, most likely because of the Touch of Thunder aspect, which buffs each arc grenade individually. Now, though this sounds terrible, trust me, Titans, you really don't need it. Our Lord of Thunder build proves just that. Also, the addition of Ionic Traces being available to all classes actually acts as a replacement here for that ability regeneration. Now, Trample. Code of the Juggernaut. Killing enemies with Fist of Havoc extends its duration. This was actually deprecated and not replaced. Fist of Havoc no longer lasts as long as it used to, and again, way back in the day, Trample allowed Fist of Havoc to last like up to 30 seconds. It was crazy. You would literally die in one spawn, to just spawn, and die again to the same super. It was nuts. Granted, Trample had already been toned back quite a bit since then, so to have it completely deprecated and not replaced, well, it's obvious that Bungie wanted to limit the uptime of Fist of Havoc. Now, moving on, we have Warlock. Deprecated abilities and perks. Starting with Void. Entropic Pool, Devour, Atomic Breach Melee Abilities, Dark Matter Passive Perk, Handel Supernova Change. Starting with Entropic Pool, a Tomb of Chaos, strike an enemy with his melee ability to drain your enemy's life force and use it to recharge your grenade. Now, this melee was deprecated with its perks being mixed and split up into Child of the Old Gods aspect. And I don't think anyone is complaining about this. Essentially, when Child of the Old Gods Void Soul is draining a target, it's granting you grenade and melee energy if you're running a healing rift, and health if you're running an empowering rift. Now, Devour, a Tomb of Hunger states that kill an enemy with his melee ability to fully regenerate your health for a short time afterward kills restore additional health. Now Devour strictly as a warlock melee was deprecated and instead moved into the Void 3.0 set of verbs usable by every class. With Void 3.0, you can get Devour via multiple ways, which includes Feed the Void Aspect, which is basically a better version of the original Devour melee, providing you with what 3.0 Devour provides and it restores you to full health and grants grenade energy just from a Void ability kill, not just a melee. You can also get devour when you pick up orbs thanks to echo of starvation fragment 
and you can further increase the duration of devour with echo of persistence fragments now the biggest nerf to devour was back in the day you could actually consume your grenade to grant yourself devour and this was especially useful in things like pvp now atomic breach a two minute fission this melee ability hits at an extended range and creates a void explosion now this like all of the melees was replaced with the only void 3.0 melee ability to warlocks pocket singularity which is essentially a better version of atomic breach now granted atomic breach was actually really really good when it first came out and it would get the one hit ko's inside of pvp when it would actually hit you up against a wall but pocket singularity is actually better it fires a ball of void energy so you have range to your melee pushes enemies away and makes them volatile which would then cause a void explosion once that enemy is damaged even further definitely worth the trade-off now handheld supernova was changed so that it's now accessed through the chaos accelerant aspect with magnetic grenades equipped now moving on to solar guiding flame and igniting touch melee abilities divine protection and everlasting fire perks let's start with guiding flame this was part of the attunement of grace subclass tree where you strike an enemy with this melee ability to inflict burn damage and empower yourself and nearby allies once again burn was changed to scorch here and empower was turned into radiant now this melee was turned into a fragment as ember of torches made you radiant on solar melee attacks and both solar melees provide scorch the equivalent to the burn from guiding flame now igniting touch a two minute flame strike an enemy with this melee ability to burn them and cause them to explode when killed now this is just scorch and ignite in a melee which both solar 3.0 melees can also do on their own which includes celestial fire and the incinerator snap by the way check out our build you literally can be colonel mustang now the Divine protection, a two minute of grace. Hold to consume your grenade into a blessing that heals allies and drops over shields for you and your allies to pick up. Now this was actually split into both the new healing grenade that all classes have access to and the heat rises warlock aspect. Now heat rises now allows you to consume your grenade to grant you a burst of healing around you while also allowing you to fire weapons, throw grenades and melees while gliding. Now the healing part of divine protection was moved to healing grenades. Providing over shields was actually removed since over shields are now mainly a void thing. Now everlasting fire, a two minute of flame. Killing an enemy with daybreak increases its duration. This was actually deprecated and not replaced, and it is a big reason why this super sucks. And guys, yes, this super sucks. Daybreak is terrible, at least inside of PvE. PvP is still good, especially with the track, but inside of PvE, terrible. Now, Arc, Rising Storm melee ability, Transcendence, Pulse Wave, and Arc Web Perks. Now, starting with Rising Storm, Attunement of the Elements. This electrocuting melee ability hits at extended ranges and recharges your super grenade and melee energy. Now, the Chain Lightning melee ability got its extended range while the ability regeneration from rising storm was likely removed completely because of the warlock's ability to generate ionic traces so easily which makes up for that loss in ability regeneration also warlocks got that brand new blink forward melee provided by the lightning surge aspect which is absolutely nasty now transcendence this was part of a tombment of conduction when cast with full grenade and melee energy storm trance lasts longer and fully restores health this was deprecated completely gone by never to return pulse wave a tombment of control being critically wounded triggers an energy wave that boosts yours and allies speed and this was deprecated due to the new arc 3.0 verb amplify which allows every class to get that boost to their movement speed now, pulse wave was really nice inside of pvp and i definitely liked it for warlocks even way back in d1 days now arc web attunement of conduction enemies damaged by your grenades chain deadly lightning to nearby enemies each grenade or melee chain returns grenade energy this is kind of the debate right now amongst arc 3.0 or really all the 3.0 classes you could argue and say that at one time warlocks were the grenade based class between void and especially here on arc with arc web can you still have good grenade based builds on a warlock or it's more specifically an arc warlock you can't is it as good as arc titans though with lord of thunder hell no bungie definitely flipped the script here on class identity so guys those are some of the abilities i wanted to go over on what changed what was actually deprecated and what was actually erased completely i'm curious to know what you think about these abilities on your screen right now that did get completely removed from the game are you sad about it. Was 3.0 actually worth the trade-off? Personally, I think it is. The only thing I didn't like was that Sun Warrior got its damage buff removed. However, we knew that was going to happen anyways, whether Solar 3.0 was coming or not. Bungie made it very clear they wanted to deal with that buff and remove it because it was so easy to access passively with the likes of Lorely. Either way it goes, I think that 3.0 subclasses is definitely still the right direction and layout for all of our subclasses. And who's to say these abilities right here won't return to us at some point as an aspect or fragments. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.